Well, here we are with another workshop video. I'm Tony Fowl, and this video is more or less just a preview of a series of videos I'm going to do describing a conversion that I did to my lathe, an electronic conversion, where the lead screws have been replaced with ball screws and the controls manually here rapid controls in out are all controlled electronically through this little control box I made up here. Now it has all the hardware on it that's necessary for a full CNC conversion but I didn't want a CNC. Full CNC means you've got to boot up a computer, you need to put some uh, G code into it uh, either through um, MDI or a handwritten G code program or longer still a drawing in CAD and passing that through a CAM uh, program to get the G code to run it. That's, that's pretty good if you want to make something, something complicated with many operations on like perhaps a chess piece which is often used as a demonstration for CNC lathes but it's pretty tedious if you just want to simply uh, skim a bit off the OD of a shaft or make a simple bush. So I analysed my actual lathe requirements and it was nothing like what you could get with a full CNC. Basically I wanted to do normal turning in each direction, I wanted to be able to face off in each direction, I wanted to screw cut, I wanted to turn tapers and I wanted to turn curves on the end of uh, pieces either convex or concave curves and uh, also in the, the, the side of a bar it's useful to be able to turn a concave uh, section which comes in handy if you want to make some formulas for a tube bender uh, for example. So in this video I'm just going to show a few of its capabilities some things that I did with early testing and well pretty much everything worked almost uh, straight away. I didn't have to do very much tweaking of the, the, the software. Uh, it cuts very nice threads, it cuts tapers, it does all the things that uh, I wanted it to that was a mosquito. And it's very simple to set up what I need just with this control box. So let's just have a quick look at uh, that and see how easy it is to set up to perform an operation. Well, this is the control piece. This is just a display unit. Now, at the top here, I've got a volt ammeter. This isn't really necessary, but I had it. It wasn't doing anything, and I just thought it'd be interesting to see how much uh, the drive motors use which might give me some indication as to uh, whether I'd oversize the motors or not. It rather looks like I have but I'd rather have uh, uh, oversized motors than undersized ones. Here I don't know how well it comes out on the video is a display of the X and Y. You can see that uh, moving, moving the Z now. Uh, if I do it just with the MPGs, you can see it move on here, X on here. Now, this is a very cheap uh, controller card. I've added some buttons onto it here and to, to set up the various operations. Uh, so, for instance, here, if I press this one, I get an F which is for feed. Now I use the x-axis MPG to set these values. Once I've got this uh, in operation the MPG is disconnected from operating the axis and it then puts a number in here. This is much much quicker than having to press buttons multiple times. If I want to feed uh, of say 0.1 uh, millimeters per revolution of the spindle I just put uh, 0.1 on here I press the end button to save and that's done. If I want to cut a taper I press it again and I get a T 
and I express the taper in terms of the amount to be cut off on one end in a hundred millimeters. So for instance if I wanted to cut a one in ten taper a tenth of a hundred millimeters would be ten so I would set a value of ten on here. Okay well I've just got three at the moment that, will, that shows what happens. Uh, then I can save that. The next button looks at the depth of cut and number of passes. So I press that once, I get a D for depth of cut. So say I want to take a, a total of, um, say, one millimetre off a radius, and I wind this around to, to one. There, I save that. I press it again, and I've got what's supposed to be an N on here, the closest I could get with these displays. Uh, so let's say I want to do that in four passes. I wind that up until I've got four on here and save it. The next thing to do is to set where I want the turning to start from and where I want it to, to finish. So if I put this in the ending position now, I press E, I get an E here for end if I just save that that is the, the final position that it will come to if I then say wind back from there going in on the diameter a little bit so it's just touched off then my depth of cut will be measured from where it is at that particular time that I press the go button so everything is set. Let's have a look at some of the things that I've uh, done with testing. It says it's a taper for, with a slope of uh, 1 in 10. Now uh, that's not the included slope, that's just on one side. So here we go. Well, apart from the marks that the Swarf put on it, that looks pretty good. I just put a straight edge on. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but yep, there's no visible or feelable steps. What happens to do 1 in 10? It does 10 impulses on the stepper motor in the Z direction and then it does one impulse on the X motor and then and continues on like that to do the one in ten. This is going to be my first test of a bit of threading. The lathe will be running near 550 rpm. I'll be doing a thread with a three pitch and in four passes I'll go down to one and a half millimeters total depth of cut. Uh, that is if everything works okay. Well that's not a bad looking thread actually. I don't know how well it shows in the video but uh, in, in reality it's not bad at all. Now we'll try a one millimeter pitch thread. Okay, let's be a little bit adventurous. I've wound the uh, spindle speed up to 1052 RPM. I'm going to do a one millimeter pitch thread. Total uh, depth of cut is a bit under 0.7 millimeters, and I'm going to do that in four passes. Oh, that's damn good. Let's see if we can get a close-up. There we are. More magic. Well, this is going to be the first test of the 
optimised depth of cut uh, changes with screw cutting. Uh, I'm doing a one millimetre pitch thread. I've got a depth maximum depth of cut or the total depth of cut at uh, half a millimetre, and I've set four passes. I haven't even done a, a cut air test, um, such as the um, reckless confidence of youth, I guess. Well, that's a nice looking thread from back here. Let's put a thread gauge on it. Probably stick my head. Oh, that is absolutely spot on. But it's the nicest thread that I've done so far. That really is nice. Yep. The reckless confidence of youth paid off. This is a first test of screw cutting on a taper. I've previously cut this 1 in 10 taper. I've set the control to do a 1mm pitch thread, 0.61mm total depth of cut and 4 passes and the speed is a bit over 1000 rpm. Now I haven't tested this at all before so I've got my fingers crossed. Let's go. Well here we are with both axes working together. <laughs> Z, the X, quick, quick, quick. Now, what happens if I press two buttons? It only takes notice of the first one I press. The thing is, when it's in the rapid mode like that, I have it so that the processor is only dealing with that so it just ignores any other inputs. But with these, you might be able to see all those inputs are small, but they both work together. That's because from one click to the other, there's plenty of time for the system to uh, see what's going on elsewhere. Uh, so that can be handy, but having both uh, rapids at the same time I think would just be a recipe for uh, uh, some sort of crashes. Now demonstration of actually turning, I've set this up to do two passes so it'll come along, rapidly pull the, the slide back, rapidly come back to the start uh, Z position, go into the start X position and then go again. So here we go. There we go. If you uh, like this video or any of the others, please share, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the uh, button to receive updates of any other videos. Thanks for watching.